Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made the way for me. Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast, and this is Kenneth Copeland Bible College right here. Praise the Lord. So let's give the Lord a praise. And we'll welcome the world into our classroom today. <laughs> Praise God. So, and literally, uh, this, of course, on the Victory Channel, just literally goes out to the world. And isn't that amazing? Yes. Praise God. Father, we thank you. It's beyond our imagination now. And we praise you and honor you for faith, for the, the directions of faith, and what it is, and how to use it, and how to feed it. And we've learned that it is a powerful, uh, invis invisible force. We have found that it comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We found out how it works. It works by love. We found out how it, how it is released. It is released out of the human heart through the mouth and actions. And we praise you for that, sir. And we worship you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow, this has been a great week in talking about faith. And we talked about faith comes, faith works, faith is, and faith does. Well, we're going to talk about today, faith does, faith acts. So let's turn to the book of James in chapter 2 and look at the 14th verse. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works. Can faith save him? All right. This, let's look at this then from the classic Amplified once again. And it's also excellent in Weymouth translation. Now, they, we don't have that where we can get to it yet. We're still working on it here at KCM um, because we put that New Testament back into print. It was out of print for a long time. It's also called the New Testament in modern English. And in this passage right here, it says, what does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and hath not works? Can faith save him? Faith without corresponding action is dead. Now look at it. If a brother or sister is poorly clad and lacks food for each day, and one of you says to him, goodbye, keep yourself warm and well fed, without giving him the necessities for the body, what does that do? So also faith, if it does not have work, deeds and actions of obedience to back it up by itself is destitute of power, inoperative and dead. Someone will say to you then, you say you have faith and I and have good works. How, now you show me your alleged faith apart from any good works if you can, and I, by good works of obedience, will show you my faith or corresponding action. That, to me, corresponding action really says it. Without corresponding action, faith is dead. Now, let's take, turn over to Mark 5 while we're talking about this. Let's take um, the woman with the issue of blood She heard, she heard of Jesus. So somebody is relaying messages to her. She's a shut in. She's been locked up for 12 long years with this issue of blood. So you know she's skin and bones. Many physicians spent all that she had. Now, but she kept saying it. If I but touch his garment, his clothes. One said the hem of his garment. What's she talking about? She's talking about Jesus is a rabbi. He dressed as a rabbi all the time. He wore the rabbi's robe. He wore the rabbi's clothes and, and his prayer shawl was lengthy and came out from under his clothing. And she was after that prayer shawl. She had been taught that that's where the anointing is. And she said, if I but touch that, I'll be made whole. I will. I will be made whole. 
She believed it and she said it. What was the corresponding action? She got out in that crowd knowing full well she was breaking the law because for her, read it in the fifth chapter of of Leviticus. It'll, It'll explain it all there. She was unclean because of that issue of blood. It was a stoning offense to break that law, but she had such faith in that power, such faith in Jesus because she heard it and faith came and she kept saying it. She kept saying that. I just kept saying she said it and then she did it. The corresponding action to her faith was to crawl out there. She fully intended. We know know from what it says that she fully intended to crawl out there and get back and get herself together and then come out in public. Because she, she believed that this, this bleeding is going to stop when I touch him. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up then she felt it. She believed it before she ever went out in the street. She said it before she ever went out in the street. And what did Jesus say? Jesus stopped and said, who touched my clothes? Jesus knowing in himself, King James says virtue, Jesus knowing in himself that dunamis, power, had gone out of himself, he turned about and said, who touched me? Faith, he was headed to Jairus' house to raise his little daughter up by faith because Jairus said, he said, He besought him greatly saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. And that's the last thing he said. He stayed with it. And and so faith, Jesus didn't even answer him. He just headed to his house. And the woman with the issue of blood stopped him. Faith put him on the move and faith stopped him in the middle of the street. He was aware of her. uh, He was aware of the power that went out of him. She was aware that she was healed and made whole. Faith. And he said, daughter, your faith made you whole. Her faith. What happened? Now listen to me, listen to me. You there at home, listen to me now. Faith, a powerful, invisible spiritual force. Faith in her heart took title deed to that healing. She came to a place where she wasn't believing it. She knew it. I had Brother Robert say this to me. I heard him say it to people over and over and over again. Faith connects with God and connects with God. And you come to the place that you just know in your knower you know that you know that you know that you know that you just know that you know you know that you know that you know you know you know that you know you know you're healed. 
Then he said, go into action. Glory to God. Glory. And, and one way he expressed this, he said, Kenneth, if God tells you to build a build, then dig a hole. But he said, always sow a seed first. Yes. Sow the seed and dig the hole. When it came time, the Lord had said this to him, the day he was healed from stuttering and healed from tuberculosis. The Lord said to him that day, you will build me a university. I mean, and it was years before it came time. But when the Lord said it's time is now, it's now. He and Miss Evelyn took all of their savings and they liquidated property and they brought all that they owned before the board of trustees of the Abundant Life Ministries of Oral Roberts Evangelistic Association and put it on the table. And they said, this is Oral Roberts University. We're sowing our lives into it and the Lord will build it. Amen. Amen. So that's what you do. Corresponding action to that faith. Now then, back up over here to Mark 5, 15. Now, now you know what happened here. They came over to the other side of the sea, the country of the Gadarenes, and came out of the other side. The ship immediately met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Now, we've talked about this before. And we find this in the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians. The Holy Spirit through the apostle Paul gives us the rank and file of Satan's organization from the ground up. Principalities. He said, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and wicked spirits in the heavenlies. Now, and we've looked into that some in times past. We don't have time to go into that here. But we see it manifest here in this chapter. When he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him of the, of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, a ruler of the darkness of this world, one spirit, the boss spirit. who had his dwelling among the tombs, no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters or shackles and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken to pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Now that's Samson in reverse. That had, Samson wasn't an unusually large man. But when the power of God came on him, the, the strength of God was where his strength was. Well, this is just in reverse. This man's skin and bones and naked. But the, the power of this, of this demon and all the other demons that were working through him, all the other devils, would, would empower him and he'd just tear those shackles and chains up. Always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones, so he was a cutter. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I, now the, 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 the ones that I have faced sounded something like this. What have I to do with thee, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure thee, my God, you torment me not. It's a sickening kind of a sound that just irritating and and raspy, ugly, nasty thing. I've heard it more than once. And there was a man that had gangrene in his legs. And I stood at the foot of his bed and laid my hand and he looked up at me and started growling at me. And that thing left. 
and he was healed. Glory to God. But see, that wasn't the man. He wasn't growling like a dog. So, for he had said unto him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. He asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Leon, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of that country. That is a huge revelation. The devil had assigned him there and it's obvious what his job was to fight Jesus every step of the way. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. Now all the devils besought him. Now the people heard that conversation between Jesus and that devil. They didn't know it was a devil. They thought it was the man. And they were afraid of him anyway because he never slept. They thought he must be some kind of a God. He never sleeps. He just goes around naked all the time. They were afraid of him. But then, now that, that devil's power had been broken. So he was gone. Now Jesus had to deal with the legion, three to 6,000 of them. That that one unclean spirit, a ruler of the darkness of this world. So now we're dealing with principalities and powers. These are lower level devils than that one boss devil. So, now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. All the devils besought him saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. These, the, this herd of pigs, roughly 2,000 of them, this was also extremely frightening because that was those hogs were food for the Roman garrison that was stationed there. That could bring a lot of trouble. All of a sudden, somebody calls 2,000 hogs to run off out in the room, screaming and hollering. 2,000 demon possessed hogs. Oh my goodness. I, my grandpa had a few of them. And they nasty sounding things. Hmm. Anyway. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 and they drowned in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and they see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, go home to your friends, go home to your friends. So he wasn't home. He lived somewhere else. And now we're going to see where. Go home to your friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. And he but departed and began to publish in Decapolis or the 10 surrounding cities, how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel. Now we're talking about faith acts, faith plans, faith gets ready. Amen. Amen. I've mentioned this to you before, but Keep this very alive in your teaching and preaching. 
they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. So where did those clothes come from? Now, Jesus had to have prepared for that before they ever went over there. I mean, that's just, oh, and can't you just see him? No, and he gathers everybody together and he says, now here's what's going to happen. We're going over there. And there's a man over there that you've heard about. He's in terrible shape, but I'm going over there and the father's going to set him free. Now, I'm going to call him to preach and I can't send him home naked. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's get him some really nice clothes. When he goes home, he needs, he needs not to tell people what great compassion the Lord has had for him, but what good is it going to do if he goes home and tells that and he's naked and nasty and all dirty and ugly and, and comes dragging home and said, look what Jesus did for me. No, I want him going home looking good. I want him to look good because he's going to start, he's going to start filling out again. He's going to, so we need to take a little time here. We're right here by the water. Let's, you know, you just get him there in the water and clean him up and put these new suits on him. Amen. Glory. That, I got so excited when I saw that. I thought, that's him. Now, listen, I remember. I remember when I, I bought a fairly nice looking trench coat that came down to about here. It was white, but I got it at Railroad Salvage and it had these big old black blotches on it. And I was preaching in Shawnee, Oklahoma and for Opal and, and Roy Sprague in their church. And so, and Opal washed that coat and washed it. She liked to got it all out. It looked good enough. I wore it. And, the, and, and back during that time, I had my britches split while I was preaching. And I'm preaching prosperity. I didn't have a suit like this back there then. My britches split while I was preaching. So I just didn't turn around. I just kept backing up and walking sideways and kept preaching faith and prosperity. You got back to the hotel and sewed my britches up. Well, I've been in the army. I learned a little bit about sewing your clothes. I sewed them up and kept preaching. And then we're out of time and faith works. Glory to God. Come on, give the Lord another praise for this whole week. Hello, everybody. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. This is Kenneth Copeland Bible College. This is the student body. And today is a day of faith. Hallelujah. So give the Lord praise. It's really wonderful. It's really unique uh, because we've got everyone together and it's a very unified body. And uh, there's just something extra that you receive when we're all together as a unit like that. My words are spirit. You have to get it in the spirit first for it to come on out into the flesh. Glory to God. Faith-filled words dominate the laws of sin and death. It was full of faith. You could feel it. It was tangible in the room. Brother Copeland really makes it easy for us to understand it and for me to go home and, and just apply it. You are specific. You were born of the Spirit of God and God knew you and He knew me before the foundation of the world. You were destined to be sitting in this room today and here to get all excited and all wound up about the force of faith. It's living in the now. Hello, Pastor Terry Copeland Pearson's here again, and I am with Pastor George, who is Vice President of Kenneth Copeland Bible College. 
and again with Dr. Tony Irby, the Dean of the college here. It's so great to have them both as we wind this up exciting. this first yeah. week with Brother Copeland yeah. in KCBC. Not the first week he's been there, but this series of two Same weeks yes. of Brother right. Copeland. Right. Now, Pastor George, I'm sure everybody's wondering why there's a bulldog looking at me over my shoulder. Dr. Tony, tell us, why is there a bulldog? There's a bulldog. There's That's a bulldog. our mascot. We're going to call him Max. 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 And so explain, <laughs> explain to this audience how Kenneth Copeland Bible College on Eagle Mountain International uh, Church property at Eagle Mountain Lake has a bulldog for a mascot. It's a bulldog because of Pastor George's series, Bulldog Faith. Bulldog KCBC faith. KCBC is founded on faith. Yeah. Bulldog yeah. faith. Bulldog Not just faith. any faith. Bulldog. Why is, what is it about bulldog faith, Pastor George? Bulldog faith will bite down on the Word of God and will not let go until it has what it's believing for. And that's what we're producing with these students. That's what they are Actually, they're, that's the bone they're gnawing on. <laughs> bone they're For two years. All, all, yes, all, every day. <laughs> every day. So they come out of, out of here full of the Word of God and ready to bite down on whatever God's assignment is and to take hold with that and to take that same Bulldog, bulldog faith, faith right. in, in their world. Yes, into the whole world. <laughs> Are you seeing that happen, I'm Dr. Tony? I'm seeing it happen. Even in our graduates, you know, we've had a couple hundred now that'll be graduating, and we're seeing them going out to every man's world and really uh, replicating, you know, this message and ministry of faith. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. And so <clears throat> when you support Kenneth Copeland Bible College, that's what you are sending out. Our students that have come, not just to learn faith, in general, you know, every believer has faith, but to learn the kind of faith that absolutely will not quit, will not be defeated. So here's how you can give. You can go online to kcm.org slash give and just look for the KCBC account. And Pastor, tell them about the text to give. Well, text to give, you can text the number 36609 and the keyword is KCBC. And it's very easy. You can also give by phone. Uh, use the number that's on your screen and mention KCBC when you call. Yeah. Now, of course, if you're outside the United States, uh, all you need to do is uh, you can call that number or contact through kcm.org in your country. Or you can write KCBC, Fort Worth, Texas, 76192. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and know that that support is sending the Word of God around the world. So stay with us next week because we're going to be joining Brother Copeland again as he teaches in the Kenneth Copeland Bible College. And until then, we want you to remember that God, God loves, loves you, you, we love you, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. For more information on Kenneth Copeland Bible College, go to kcbiblecollege.org.